Hey guys, it's Tim and this is PWU Daily for March 28th, 2019. This is our weekly Monday through Friday video show where I bring you a bunch of news in one condensed video. I run down a number of topics over the last 24 hours and then bring you some new news stories you may have missed and give my thoughts on them as well. This show, like I said, drops every Monday through Friday at roughly 11 a.m. Pacific right here on the PW Unlimited YouTube channel. So, as I've been saying all week, I'm going to say this once more. The show's going to be ever-evolving, growing into something that's going to be great for both you guys and for me. I want to add maybe more segments to the show, but I want to know what you guys think. Do you like the show so far? Do you think anything should be added? And do you think maybe you've seen somebody else do something and you're like, please, please don't do that yourself? Well, again, I just want you guys' feedback so we can make this show into something really good that you guys really, really like and really do want to watch every Monday through Friday. Now, we got to shout out this week's sponsor. It's Insight Editions. Insight Editions are the makers of WWE's new official cookbook. With the new WWE official cookbook, you can get you can make things like salsa banks, foley guacamole. Uh, Kevin Cauliflower Nash, Bailey's Chicken Huggets, and even Ric Flair's Woo Bee Pies as well. The book is available with the link in the description below. And if you want more WWE stuff, Inside Editions has also come out with WWE's Pop Quiz Trivia Deck. It's a kind of like a deck of cards deal, but it's got over 195 different questions and answers in a nice little compact sleeve so you can play the game at home or you can take it on the road and stump your friends as well. We will be using it next week over WrestleMania week in a live stream where you guys have the opportunity to win some prizes. Now, let's quickly run down some of the news that you may have missed over the last 24 hours. So it was revealed in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter this week that All In 2 will be taking place on August 31st from the Sears Center in Chicago, Illinois. Well, I think it's right outside of Chicago, technically. Excuse me. We also do know that construction has officially begun at MetLife Stadium for WrestleMania 35. Pro Wrestling Sheet reported yesterday that Gold Dust contract with the WWE has expired, and after a 90-day no-compete clause, he will be a free agent yet. Gold Dust himself took to both Instagram and Twitter to kind of shoot down these reports, stating that he's still under contract with the WWE. As of right now, the plan, the working plan, I guess you could say, because things can always change for the WrestleMania Triple Threat main event, is for it to be a winner could or winner may take all stipulation. What that really means is if Becky Lynch pins either Charlotte or Becky, no, Charlotte or Ronda, she wins their title, the other successfully retains. If Ronda or Charlotte pins Becky, they both just retain. But if Charlotte pins Ronda or vice versa, that person would get both titles. Everyone's expecting for a Becky to beat Ronda, Becky walk out the champion, Charlotte also retains her title. PW Insider reported yesterday, well actually they got it confirmed yesterday, that for the first time in almost a decade, WWE will run live Raw and SmackDown from Madison Square Garden with Raw on September 9th and SmackDown on September 10th. Also, WWE has announced the full lineup of matches with their deeming Worlds Collide matchups for WrestleMania access over the, over the five-day event. We do have a video up on our channel, or you can go watch yesterday's episode of PWU Daily to hear the exact full lineup that WWE has announced. Now with that, for you today, we've got four big topics on the docket, and the first one has to come, it comes from yesterday's NXT conference call, media conference call, where Triple H talked about some plans for Tommaso Ciampa and his unfortunate injury. So a little over two weeks ago, former NXT champion Tommaso Ciampa had to undergo neck surgery. He vacated the NXT championship, and during Wednesday's NXT conference call, Triple H stated the following. Obviously, we knew about it. We knew it was going to be, necess be a necessity going forward, but the decision was made of, let's do this with the main roster. Let's give him that exposure. He'll take some time off, get it fixed up, and be back and better than ever. Unfortunately, with that type of an injury he had, it went from one thing to another very rapidly. 
We couldn't wait. It changed from being something manageable to being something that it was not a risk we were willing to take for anything. So we moved him in, so we moved him immediately to doing surgery. A lot of that, a lot of thought was put into all the conversations, but clearly something we knew about. There was a, a plan for him on all aspects of it, including him taking time off down the road to get it fixed. We knew the length of time, probably, and that it was going to take and how long it was going to take for a return. As you're looking at this, there are certain things that are manageable and you can manage a situation where there could be no risk, no damage, no anything. You're just managing the symptoms and getting to where you might want to have, you know, it taken care of eventually. Then the situation changed. Instead of being manageable, it progressively got worse. When we saw that, we made the decision with him to go in the direction that we did. So basically, WWE knew about the neck injury, knew that he was going to need some sort of a surgery, but at first didn't think it was as bad as it was going to be. From everything that we have heard over the last month or so, with him coming up to the main roster with Johnny Gargano as a tag team, the plan was for Tommaso Ciampa to actually drop the NXT Championship to Johnny Gargano at NXT TakeOver New York and then move on to the main roster, then after I don't know exactly how much time, go on and get the surgery. Like Triple H did state here, they wanted to get him that main roster exposure before he had to go take that take that time off. And I don't know if this was enough a main roster exposure. This was only, what, two weeks on the main roster before he had to go, before he had to get the surgery done. So I don't know if you could really call that enough a main roster exposure. But according to doctors in the video that WWE did air on, not this, but last week's NXT episode, they did state that he could be out of action for upwards of a year. With this type of surgery, some people are also not able to do anything physical for eight to, up to 18 months. So we'll see how Tommaso Ciampa goes. Tommaso Ciampa is a resilient fella, and hopefully he can come back sooner rather than later. And from all indications on what Triple H stated, it looks like when he comes back, he could be coming back straight to the main roster, but with him having to, quote-unquote, vacate the NXT championship, maybe he wants some vindication. Maybe he wants to challenge whoever's the champion one last time to see if he can get Goldie back. With that also talking about yesterday's NXT conf uh, conference call and NXT itself, Triple H did confirm the standalone NXT show coming on June 8th. In the same NXT conference call, Triple H talked about an upcoming standalone NXT event that will take place in San Jose, California, and what that city and venue of San Jose State University means to him, the growth of NXT, all dating back to the Friday before WrestleMania 31. Triple H stated the following. The San Jose State University Event Center is a place where, before we were even doing takeovers, we kind of did the first WrestleMania weekend event where we were just testing the waters and it sold out and became this epic event that really set the brand in motion. I'm really excited to go back there on June 8th, separate from anything else, no other pay-per-views around it, and put on an event that is epic and say thank you to that location for getting us off to such a great start. So what happened was... The Friday before WrestleMania 31, they decided since they had a lot of NXT talent in town already for um, the Access show, they decided, you know what, let's put on an event. Let's put on a show. It's not going to be taped. It's just going to be a live event at the San Jose State University Event Center. Apparently, that was the first time that Vince McMahon ever attended any NXT event live, and he was blown away by from what we had heard. Now, I didn't attend the event myself. I did go to WrestleMania and WrestleMania Access events that weekend, but I didn't get in till the next day, Saturday. I did have a couple friends that did go to the show and stated that it was just an amazing show, and it had an atmosphere that they had never seen before from a live WWE show that they have gone to or even really seen on TV. They said the atmosphere of that first NXT, I guess you can say, outside of Florida live event, was just so different than anything that they knew that WWE had something here with TakeOver, well, not with TakeOvers because it wasn't called TakeOver, but with NXT that could be something more than we could have ever thought, and it grew into TakeOver events. Yeah, the first 
couple of TakeOver events were only at full sail, but then more and more they started traveling with TakeOver, and now TakeOver is so big and the NXT brand itself is they don't have to say, oh, hey, you're coming in for money in the bank. Well, the night before, how about you go to TakeOver as well? You get two, two, two shows for the same weekend. NXT is so big now, they don't have to worry about, oh, well, we can only run an NXT TakeOver if it's in conjunction with a main roster event. Excuse me. They don't have to do that anymore. They don't have to worry about all of that because, like I said, TakeOver is such a big show, and it all really kicked off here with this event the Friday before WrestleMania 31 when they said, hey, these fans really like this. This could be something huge. Let's see what we can expand on this. So that event could be what you call the turning point of the NXT brand becoming more than just a developmental brand. I think at the time, the Shield was no longer in NXT. They had been gone for a couple of years, but Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, Bayley, they were all really coming into their own at that time. You still had Finn Balor, Hideo Itami. There's a lot of guys. Tyler Breeze was still down there as a big star. So it's like a lot of guys you see now on the main roster were at that show. I think Kevin Owens was the... Might have been the NXT champion at that time. No. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kevin Owens was the NXT champion at that time. Because I remember I saw him at Access with the title. So, yeah. Kevin Owens was the NXT champion at that time. And it's like, look where they were then, talent-wise, to how and, and just exposure-wise, to how far that brand has actually grown to now. So, if you guys do want to go, the show will be taking place on June 8th from the San Jose State Event Center. I may try to go live. And if so, let's meet up. Let's do something cool. We'll see. I'll give you more information once tickets do go on sale on where, on, not where, you know, Ticketmaster is how you order the tickets, but when they do go on sale and if there's going to be a pre-sale or a VIP deal, we'll let you all know when more information is available. I'm talking about WWE events and upcoming events. Yesterday, Pro Wrestling Sheets' Ryan Satin reported on recent SEC filings by the WWE that showed most of, but not all possibly touring dates for the WWE from right after WrestleMania 35 all the way up to WrestleMania 36, and I wanted to hit on some of the key dates for you guys here. So first off, WWE has a nine dates sent for full sale university NXT tapings for the remainder of 2019. Most of them are one offs, like one a month, but I think September has two dates and November also has two dates. We do know that WWE will run live Raw and SmackDowns from Madison Square Garden on September 9th and September 10th. This is going to be the first time in almost a decade, like it's only like two months off of being a decade, maybe three months off from being a decade since the last time they ran television in MSG. We do know that the first ever SmackDown on Fox will be on October 4th, but we now know that it's actually taking place from the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California. It was, it was in this filings that WWE will be returning to Saudi Arabia on November 1st. Yet, the reported May 3rd date was not listed as far as WWE returning to Saudi Arabia then. I don't know exactly what that means if maybe the May 3rd date has been pulled or if it was just omitted for some reason in these filings. Also, dates that WWE will not be running July 4th, Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, and also New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. So with them not running on Christmas and New Year's, then it looks like, just like with the last two years, they will be having pre-taped shows for Raw and SmackDown on Christmas, Christmas Eve, New Year's, and New Year's Eve. And finally, the last thing we wanted to touch on has to do with Jimmy Uso and his arrest back in February. Back in February, one half of the SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions, Jimmy Uso, was arrested in Detroit after his wife Naomi was pulled over for driving the wrong way on a one-way road. Uso reportedly got out of his vehicle, in very intoxicated, squared up with police as if he wanted to fight the police, and that led to his arrest. According to a report yesterday from TMZ, Uso pled no contest after being charged for interfering with a government employee. He was ordered to pay $450 in fines and will not have to serve any jail time. 
So that's good for Jimmy Uso. If you remember, this news did come out. I think it happened like just days before the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, before they did win the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championships. So Jimmy Uso, he's all good. He pled, you know, no contest. He, <clears throat> I guess that means he took blame for what he did, and he's not going to have to serve any jail time. That's the good part. There is a video that did come out from the, I guess you call it, what do you call it, the body cam footage of the police officers where they were speaking with him and Naomi during the incident. You don't see him actually square up with the police in the video, but you do see him talking about, I'm only here for a one-off, I'm only here just for the day, or something along those lines before they put him into the, the squad car. And then you see the officers talking with Naomi, how she's like, what's going to happen to him? Do I need to get a bail bondsman? Do I need to bail him out of jail? And they're like, your husband will be fine. He's going to spend a day in jail. Just talk to him about his drinking. And Naomi did did agree. She's like, I'm sorry. He's very intoxicated right now. So good news for one half of the tag team champions, Jimmy Uso. Now, before we go, we got a deal for you. A WrestleMania size deal from Pro Wrestling Tees. Pro Wrestling Tees will be running their annual WrestleMania event. Well, their, their sale, I guess you could say. It's not quite an event. Their WrestleMania week sale starting on Wednesday, this upcoming Wednesday, at 12 p.m., and running till the following Monday at 12 p.m. The sale will give you 20% off of all stores on the site, but if you're going to order from the New Japan Pro Wrestling Store, you'll actually get 30% off. If you use if you use the uh, if you use pre-sale code sorry mania at checkout you will get these discounts. Also, if you spend over one hundred and fifty dollars on pro wrestling tees during the sale, U.S. customers will get free shipping. So again, if you want to get some PWU merch, we do have a couple T-shirts up there on our pro wrestling tees store. You can get twenty percent off during this sale. But if you want some Los Ingo Bernables, some Bullet Club, some Okada Tanahashi merch. You can get those shirts for 30% off. Just use code MANIA at Pro Wrestling Tees during the sale from next Wednesday, starting next Wednesday, till the following Monday. So with that, that is going to wrap up today's episode of Pro Wrestling's PW... Of, sorry, <laughs> I messed that all up. Let me redo that. With that, that's going to wrap up today's episode of a PWU Daily. I want to say thank you to everybody who watched this first week of shows. I know it's been a little rocky. I'm still getting the footing for what I want this show to be, and I want to hear your guys' feedback. Like I said at the beginning of this show, and like I've said every day this week, the show is going to be growing into something cool, something bigger, something better that I want you guys to really enjoy. So again, I also got to thank our week's sponsor, Insight Editions, from whom... You can either get WWE's new official cookbook or the WWE Pop Quiz Trivia Deck. Make sure you hit that notification bell right down there, right here on YouTube, to get notified when we do post videos. Now, if you don't get notified for some reason when we do post videos or when we go live, make sure you're following us on both Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. You can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash pro wrestling ULTD, or on Twitter at PW Unlimited. That way, you'll still get some sort of a notification since we do post over there when new videos go out or when we do go live. Again, this is PWU Daily, our Monday through Friday daily news show at roughly 11 a.m. Pacific right here on the PW Unlimited YouTube channel. Thanks guys for watching and have a great weekend.